in our midst tonight. And church, without much ado, help me welcome to the podium. He's my great brother. Hallelujah. A man of great grace. A man of great depth. A man of great wisdom in the world. I believe that God has raised him for a generation. I, 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 I totally agree with the way Prophet Ashpanase always introduces him. Manasseh always says, Dr. John is 20 years ahead of the church. I am two years more. Hallelujah. Help me welcome to the podium, the ministry of Dr. John. Hallelujah. Are you here tonight? Hallelujah. Can I just wave your hands to Jesus? We are very much excited to be part of this wonderful meeting. And to see all your faces. Hallelujah. Where are the finance members? Can, can I see you rejoicing and just do something to good Jesus? <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. And um, I know that, how many of you were here yesterday? How many of you were, were blessed yesterday? Hallelujah. And uh, as you sit down, I want you to sit down with expectation. From the Lord. Determine that you will not leave this place the same. Say, I have determined never to leave this place the same. You don't even mean it. Can you mean it? Say, say, it, say it once again. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm so much excited to see. Pastor Sinclair and the lovely wife, Mrs. Sinclair, hallelujah. <laughs> Even if you just came to the meeting to meet this wonderful couple, it's okay. Hallelujah. Because they have a special anointing for you. And this one of God is so anointed that, and this couple, they are so genuine and pure. I mean, they are real believers with unfeigned and sincere faith for the Lord. Hallelujah. So I'm so excited that you are here with their wonderful son. Hallelujah. I, I came with a powerful apostolic team. Prophet Adam Julius Kujo is here. And then Reverend Chris Kingsley. Yeah. Sister, Sister Abigail is also here. Pastor Judith is here. Pastor James, Pastor Juma. Where is Pastor Alex? Pastor Alex, where are you? Pastor Alex, can you just join us? Please come forward. Hallelujah. Yeah. So I brought all of these great men from Accra. So you can just imagine. Praise God. Hallelujah. Can you just close your eyes and just prepare your heart for this meeting? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Give in to the Holy Spirit. Open up to the Spirit. Dear Holy Spirit, bless us with a word from God. And anoint every word and fill our hearts 
with the reality of the truth. Open up to the Holy Spirit. Except you don't know Him. But you know Him. If Ele bashuo le atra ho kazish ta mak ta fak de fosita alamal. Ele vet shobak fak sosh ta mak ta bi et te trek zush ta man da matai. Der betoble de do den da do batela tostor hatra maman do roboshita banda rabatia ta. Bari et rein do sika tebe kovesh in da bati bitor batel. Bete bete mendera bete tre hesheste beshete ste. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Bele hati shinga bati fete shete mendera bete shete mendera bete shete mendele. Open up to him. Mole sister be, mole sister be. Mole sister mel, mole sister mel, mole sister mel. More bebe sister ba sister ma sister ma sister ma sister ma sister ma. Shama sister ma el ke sister ma le sister ma. Ori eka sister ma di eka de sister ma di eka de ste. Ema ne ma sister ma ori eka tringo sister ma no robo ori adosi. Ole ma sha ba sha sta ba sha sta ba sta sta ba sha sta ba sha sta. Ola basa tati hati, master bas deste de shema deste de te. Not like you, Lord. Not like you, Lord. You are more glorious and excellent than the mountains of prayer. How immeasurable! Ada tabala kus, O Lord of hosts. O Lord, how manifold are all that works in wisdom that has made them all, and the earth is full of thy riches. O bashi menda bashi menda, emanda bashi manda rabashi manda, eda bashi manda rabashi. Thank you, Lord. Ilo siade, ilo siade, ilo siade, ilo siade, ilo siade, ilo siade, ilo ilo siade, ilo siade. Ila di inga de sistu hiade. Thank you. By the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus, every year is consecrated to hear the word from the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. Then we go to the book of First Peter, chapter two. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My desire is that how many of you are in the ministry of intercession? Let me see my hand. Okay.
The ministry of intercession belongs to the priestly ministry of the believer. Actually, every one of us, as long as we are born again, we are, his, we are God's priest. And the best way to see the ministry of intercession is in, within the context of the priesthood. You cannot divorce the two because once you understand your office as a priest then you will know the position the power and the authority you have with God in behalf of the people beloved we've been given a high privilege but the thing is that most of us don't know it. We have such position with God, but we don't know it. We have such power and authority with God in behalf of the people, but we don't know it. But once we come to such understanding of such privilege we have been brought into, with understanding, then we can exercise that high and noble office of intercession. Are you here with me? Praise the Lord. Sometimes, if you don't take time, you realize that on that day when you get to heaven, all that God gave us, you only use 2% of it. How will it be like? That all that God made you and all your rights and privileges he assigned you on earth, on that day you stand before him and you used only 1%. And the best among us used about 15%. And, and if you don't see it, it may happen. It may happen. So we ought to see where God has placed us and uh, the high pri privileges He has accorded us. And when you're able to maximize all that he, He's given us, I'm telling you, your joy will be totally complete. But that is your portion in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, I want us to read First Peter 2 verse 9. All right, can we already corporately? One, go. You see, what you are reading is about you, but you are reading as well as about someone. The way you are reading it is so unexciting and monotonous. I want you to read it again, at uh, this time, with some, some, some spirit, some enthusiasm. One, go. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Give him the glory. Hallelujah. This is about you and me. Now, Apostle Peter is saying that, but he, talking about us, and he mentioned for our fourfold stand, position we have with God. He says that we are a chosen generation, we are a royal priesthood, we are an holy nation, and we are peculiar people. That's who we are. Once we understand the riches of these things, I I'm telling you, something happens to your heart something happens to you. But he are, uh, when he said he are, uh, he was referring to the body of believers. All the tenses are collective pronouns. He is referring to the body of believers. Everyone who is saved, everyone who is born again, God has made us. We all have this fourfold position before God. First, we are a chosen generation. Other versions said a chosen race. That speaks of our descent from God. Or you can call it our lineage from God. Then he said, we are a royal priesthood. That describes our service to God. 
Then he said, we are an holy nation. It means we are a community for God. Then he calls us a peculiar people. And that describes our preciousness to God. Hallelujah. So all of these four blessings belong to us. They are not promises. They are facts. It's done. It's what he has made us. It's who we are. Not what we are becoming. He has made us. Praise God. So understand that we are, we are a race. As a race, we are chosen. I understand that we are priesthood. But as priests, we are royal. I understand that we are a nation. But as a nation, we are holy. And I understand that we are a people. And as a people, we are peculiar. We, we, we are distinct. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, this thing is talking about you. It's describing what he has made us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Say, I'm a chosen race. Say, I'm a chosen generation. Yeah. First of all, you must understand that we, or you, we, we, we are a kind of breed, a kind of species from, from God himself. A chosen race means that we, we, we're sourced from God. We hail from God. It shows where we have come from. In the natural, we are born of our parents. That's in the natural. But when we became born again, something happens, happened to us. That will take eternity to explain what really happened to us. All the prisoner that has gone cannot fully meet what really happened on the day when we said, Christ, be our Lord and Savior. So many things happened. And... As is of the earthy, such are they that are earthy. And as is of the heavenly, such are they that are heavenly. Naturally, we are from Adam. But in Christ, the Bible says we are heavenly. We are of a different source. The Bible says, which were born, not of the flesh, not of the will of man, not of blood, but of God. We are born of God. A unique generation. Titus 3 5 tells us that not of words of righteousness by which we are saved, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. What an experience to be born again. And when you are born again, you have experienced what is called the washing of regeneration. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Are you here with me? And Regeneration. The word regeneration is diminutive of the word gene. You know gene. Gene is that unique part of man that traces his kind, his race, or his character. Gene. 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 You know when you were born, you see the genes passed on from your parent. It naturally was given to you. As something happened when we got born again. Regeneration changed our genotype. Regeneration altered our genetic constitution. So it doesn't matter your natural lineage or descent. When you got born again, you were regened. You received a kind of gene from, from our father. In a natural, when you receive the genes from your parent, you inherited a color of your eyes, the color of your hair, and the color of your skin and everything. Something was passed to you. But much more, when we're born of God, so badly a triple bullshit something began to happen the very life and the nature of the father was transferred to us was imparted to us and regeneration changed our genotype that is to say that whatever happened in your natural descent whether there be hereditary problems or dysfunctional behaviors or moral hang-ups or curses from your natural descent when your genotype changed all those things were nullified in jesus name therefore knowing what he has made us in in redemption and in regeneration, we can lay hold of who we are and reject all that the doctors are saying because we know our identity. The Bible said, A seed shall save him, and it shall be counted unto the Lord for a generation. 
and they shall come and declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born that the Lord has done this. Psalm 22 verse 30, 31. Beloved, first understand who we are. It is one thing to know it by, not, by, by mental ascent and another thing to know it. Know it. Hallelujah. Because if you knew it, something about you would have changed. Give him a high five. Tell him I know it. I know it. I know it. I know it. There is something in me. Something in me. Now, secondly, he said, We are a holy nation. Holy nation. Uh, the nature of the of, of our nation is holy. Now he's speaking about a church. Now there are many nations on earth, but the church is a nation within the nations. Now all of us who are of Jesus, we are a nation. I remember in Numbers 21, Balaam prophesied and said, The people shall dwell alone. And they shall not be reckoned among the nations. Speaking of us, we are not reckoned, we are not counted among the nations because we are a distinct nation. We are a nation in the midst of the nations. We are the beautiful people of a beloved country. We are the Zion breed. Hallelujah. We are the nation in the midst of the nation. But he said we are a holy nation. In the Greek, the word holy actually means not common. Now, every nation on earth is common, but there is one nation that is not common. The church is that holy nation. I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, America is a common nation. Germany is common. France is common. Hong Kong is common. Singapore is common. As nice as these nations are, they are common. Dubai is common. All of these, Ghana is very common. <laughs> Nigeria is too common. <laughs> Togo is common. Benin is common. Zambia. All these nations are common. These are earthly nations. But you see, if I have eyes to see in the midst of these nations, there is a people. There is a breed, a people in the midst of the nations. The Bible says they shall not be reckoned among the nations. They are the holy people, sanctified, and such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified by the name of the Lord and by the Spirit of our God. And by one offering, he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. And we are his people. We are his holy, we are the body of Jesus. He calls us holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. We are a holy nation because we have the heavenly blessing we have the heavenly calling we have the heavenly citizenship we have the heavenly destiny everything about us is heavenly it's heavenly it's heavenly we are heavenly our nature is heavenly we have heavenly citizenship we are the holy nation my god has chosen us for himself then he said we are a peculiar people the amplified version said we, we are people of his possession peculiar people now in the greek the word the word peculiar actually speaks of a treasure that is, has been acquired that is personally acquired and owned by a person someone who acquired a treasure and the person owns the treasure that is to say to say we are a peculiar people means that we are privately owned by god we are god's treasure i, I understand how the father sees you you are god's treasure let me say this when you are god's treasury bill you are god's investment you are God's investment account. Because the believer is God's inheritance. You have no idea what God has in us. That is why Paul prayed for the church that we may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. He has his inheritance in us. God's deposit is in us. God's investment is in us. I I'm telling you, we are not ordinary. You may see yourself as ordinary. But God knew the price he paid to, to purchase you. God, it cost God all that he had to purchase you. It cost God all of his resources to purchase you. God had to lose himself and let go and spend not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. He let go everything for you. 
because the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in the field the which when a man has found for joy thereof he go back and sell it all that he had to buy that field and the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking one pearl of great price who when he has found he went and sold all that he had to buy it you are that one pearl of great price you are that one pearl of great price beloved you are that treasure that's why in, in Isaiah he said it shall be you are you are called his royal diadem you are called his royal crown he calls you the apple of his eye you know the eye is the most sensitive part of the body the apple of the eye is the pupil of the eye <laughs> so the eye is the most sensitive part of the human body but the apple of the eye is the pupil of the eye and the pupil of the eye is the most sensitive part of the eye so to say you are the apple of his eye means that you are the most sensitive part of the most sensitive part of his being. I mean you are part of God. You have no idea of your value. Your value is the blood of Jesus. Your value is a son of God. God is coming after you because you are his investment. God will not let you go. I shall give them eternal life and they shall never perish. And no man is able to pluck them out of my hands. And the father which gave them me is greater than I and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hands I and my father are one beloved we are tattooed and engraven in the father's hands we are just part of him and he is coming after you because it cost all of his resources to come after you glory then he said we are the royal priesthood that's my emphasis today the royal priesthood and, and the term royal priesthood is describing the status of our priesthood. It's describing the dignity of our priesthood. We are not just ordinary priests like the Levitical regime, like the Aaronic priesthood, or like the Levitical priesthood. For us, there's a kind of status according to our priesthood. And royalty is a status that is given to our priesthood. So we are a royal priesthood. We are not just priests, but there is kingship attached to our priesthood. Praise God. Because he has made us priests and kings and we shall reign with him on the earth. In the old covenant, the priests hailed from the tribe of Levi, but the kings came from the tribe of Judah. So it couldn't be a priest and a king. But now, something has changed. Because the priesthood being changed, there's also made a necessity, a change also of the law. Now we belong to the Melchizedekian order. The Melchizedekian priesthood is kings, is, is the, they are the king priests. You see, we are not just priests, but we are kings. And we hail from that order. So our priesthood is higher than that of the old covenant. We are not just priests, we are royals. And that gives us an advantage over the old folks. What has a king? What does a king have? In Ecclesiastes 8 verse 4, the Bible says that where the word of the king is, there is power. And who can say unto him, what are you doing? Or what doest thou? Where the word... A king speaks and it is executed. Where the word of the king is, there is power. And in the old covenant, in Deuteronomy 21 verse 5, the Bible says that by the word of the priest shall every controversy and every assault be settled. So you see, the priest had a speaking power. Kings had speaking power. And they were two, two different dimensions. But now, we are both kings and priests, so we have double speaking power. And we have double speaking power power where you are a king where your word is there is power you are the priest if there's controversy and assault you can just settle it now some of us don't we, don't, we have not used this power for instance there's controversy in your family there's a kind of real misunderstanding fighting and you just come to the scene let me show how you what you can do you can just get to your room and just open your mouth and begin to declare that as a priest I have power in my tongue to settle every assault and controversy therefore in the name of Jesus peace be still in the name of Jesus I hash anarchy to rest in the name of Jesus let elements be appeased in the name of you just use your word you come up they see you before you realize the demons of controversy just leave There's a kind of mob, there's a kind of controversy, contention on campus. And people are fighting here and there. 
You don't, 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 don't just stand on the corridor and fold your hands. Hey, this world, look at what has happened to this generation. Hey, oh, rebellion. Oh, don't just stand there and just, 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 just complain about the situation. Get into your room and take your place as, as the lost priest. By my word, every controversy is settled. By my word, every assault is settled. And just release your word. Remember, you are not just a priest, you are the king. And as you release your word, where the word of the king is, there is power. All many potence is unleashed when your word is unleashed. And when your word is unleashed, it goes forth and settles amicably every controversy. That's what to do. We have power, but we, we don't know we have it. Just begin to use it and see. Just, just use it, use it, use it, use it, use it. Use it. You, you have praying power. You see, we, we have, we pray, but if you know who you are, you, your prayer goes with authority. And your prayer goes with power. And, and something is attached to your prayer. Your prayer is no longer ordinary. I'm telling you, the secret behind human success has been in the work of the priesthood. The secret behind the, the, the movement of the church and the salvation of souls, everything has been this cause. Every good thing that happens to humankind is from God. Many, many years ago, in the days of John Wesley, England, you know the cause of the Industrial Revolution, Industrial Revolution began from the revivals that began with John Wesley, the Wesleys and Whitefield. England was a kind of... Uh, London, the whole London was a casino. People were just messing all around. And poverty was rampant. Street people were all over. <laughs> Mora Icadence, Mora Padma. And Whitefield arose. These guys could pray. These guys, for two whole weeks, they'll be on the floor crying, taking their place as a priest, crying, 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 and the Wesleys. And when the power of God hit the land, that's what led to the industrial revolution. You just go and find it out. Yeah. The rise of civilization was because people actually took their place in prayer. And when you go to Malaysia, Malaysia was so poor, the change in Malaysia was a result of the praying of the, of the saint. If, if you meet some of the Malaysian believers, they can tell you their history. They say that these believers will go and stand at, at, at somewhere and they'll just prophesy and they'll just declare that there will be a highway here. Meanwhile, there were no highway. We declare highway. We declare malls, this place. They'll go and stand at a place and declare industries and factories. Can you imagine? That's what... And the Malaysian Christians tell us that actually... The very place they had where they decreed high streets and all those double houses, whatever, whatever they call it. Those, those were the same place where streets were con constructed. And the places where they prophesied malls, those were the same places where malls were, con were, were constructed. They exercised their speaking power. We have it, but we don't know it. It just released it. And it happened. Oh. So many things have happened because your mouth has been shut. So many problems around you is because your mouth is shut. The problems in the nation is because our mouth is shut. But God's way of unleashing blessing to man is in our lips. It's in our mouth. This is where he has ordained it. If you shut your mouth, destinies are shut. If you shut your mouth, <laughs> increase, blessing, civilization, Everything is sharp. Industrialization is sharp. Source will never, will never receive because your mouth is sharp. The reason why youth are rebelling is because your mouth is sharp. The reason why preachers are living pulpit is because your mouth is sharp. The reason why the world, the world, is, the world is not preached properly is because your mouth is sharp. Hmm. Oh, may God give us an open mouth that we order the world with our mouth and with our word. Our word. Once upon a time, the Israelites were going to fight the kings of Canaan. The Bible said, Zebulon and Naphtali were a people that jeoparded their lives unto the death in the high places of the field. 
the kings came and fought then fought the kings of Canaan in Tanakh by the waters of Megiddo and they took no gain of money in Judges 5 18 in verse 20 says that they fought from heaven and the stars in their courses fought against Assyria can you imagine that these guys Zebulon these Israelites were fighting on, on earth but the Bible says they fought from heaven you can be on earth and fight from heaven the Bible says they fought from heaven and the stars in their courses fought against their enemy the stars as they were fighting hey God was throwing stones hailstones from heaven and the stars <laughs> were fighting against the enemies of Israel can you imagine they fought from heaven beloved we fight from heaven you see we fight from our jointly seated position with Christ because that is where we really are and that is where authoritative prayer proceeds from prayer of authority is not prayed from the earth it's prayed from heaven we pray by the execution of authority we speak because whatever we lose on the earth is loosed in heaven and whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven and if you know where you are that you are jointly seated with Christ and your word is his word I'm telling you you have the mandate on your lips to change matters and to change situations and as we say it so it shall be Many years ago, I read a book by Ike Nathan Ozoma, occult grandmaster now in Christ. This guy, of course, he was an occult grandmaster, but he's now in Christ. He's a pastor. And he describes the occult realm. And there was once a time he was being in his, he said there were six realms in occultic. And uh, people we call witches, they are not even in the first realm. No. It's the highest rank of witches. He, said he calls them the Abramelian witches. They, they are in the first rank. And he even mentioned powerful people like Hitler and Co. They were in the second realm. And those who get to the sixth realm, they are those who become the, what they call the occult grandmasters. If you get there, then you watch, they worship you. He mentioned people like Buddha, people who get there and Satan gives you a following, you are worshipped. And during one of his initiations, he was being initiated to the third realm in the occultic. And he was born into it actually so from birth he knew that satan was god he had been deceived so during the initiation he said all the powerful demons principalities and powers from all over the world had come to that initiation <laughs> can you imagine it was a conference of principalities and powers dominions and thrones they had come and they were ushering him all of a sudden a smoke came from nowhere and destroyed the meeting and he saw Satan run away and all the demons run away and so he was wondering how can Satan run away and how can all the forces run away then they trace where the, the, the distraction came from the smoke came from they trace it and it was it traced it to Kenya actually to Kenya can you imagine something in Nigeria they trace it to Kenya and uh, there were only five believers taking authority over the powers of the air and they didn't even know what they were doing Five believers praying on our feet, Maro Baba Shaba, like like we're praying on Padre Baro Baba. We take authority over the parts of the air. We bind of elements. We bind the forces. We that is all that they were doing. And that's what destroyed their meeting. Five believers, and he was shocked. How could such a people, just a few number, have such power? How could that be? Beloved, if they had not done it, just, just look at it just five tell your neighbor open your mouth because the destiny of the nation lies on your mouth in your mouth tell another person open your mouth hallelujah now turn with me to the book of Isaiah 24 verse 2 Isaiah 24 verse 2 And it shall be as with the people, people, so with the priest. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest. And this is a very serious sentence. You know what God is saying? 
in that in every society you go how the priest is is how the society is what god is trying to say is that we are as strong as the priesthood if the priesthood is weak the people are weak if the priesthood is strong the people are strong where the priest go as the priest goes so the people the priests have such influence that how they are is actually how the people are god is trying to say that the priesthood is the moral compass of the society that's what he's saying so for instance if you come if you get to any land how the people are how their behavior is how they are acting actually it's a reflection to how the priest is or how the priesthood is the reason is that the priest would have the power to take responsibility to make changes and influence so whether the people are high or low depends on the decision of the priest so how the eyes how the people are <laughs> please are you, are you following me and it shall be as with the people so the priest <laughs> so the people are just the reflection of what the priesthood is the people can never arise beyond the priesthood our morality can never rise beyond the priesthood. Our blessing can never rise beyond the priesthood. As with the people, so with the priest. <laughs> so I, I'm telling you that God holds resp- as the, the responsibilities on our shoulders. Now you you, you can stand and 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 and, 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 com- and, 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 and complain about the economy of Ghana and about the errors of the leadership and what is happening you, you are blaming them but God is blaming you <laughs> because it shall be as with the people so with the priest God is not holding God is not looking to them he's looking to you his body his church because we are his expression he's, you are the one he's looking to <laughs> because you are the one who can do something about it not the people we have no idea that the destiny of the nations lies on our shoulders the future bless- blessings of nations is on our shoulders. Are you with me? That's why the, the Lord Jesus told Rick in one of his encounters that the reason why abortion is so much rampant is increasing now is because of the church. How can you blame the church for abortion? But Jesus said because of the church. Why? Jesus said, because the church has aborted her spiritual seed, which is evangelism. And so in a nutshell, we, we can, how can we? So Jesus was telling him in that encounter that the reason for abortion is evangelism, because we are aborting our spiritual seed, which is evangelism. So as with the people, so with the priest. <laughs> so you, you are the pastor complaining, oh, look at the abortions. But God is holding you responsible. Uh, responsible. And as I'm talking about, don't look at your pastor or don't look at the fathers. Don't look at Dr. Menzo Tabo. Don't look, don't look at Archbishop Duncan Williams. Look at yourself. Because the priesthood, we are talking about, that's why I said the priesthood is a collective body of believers. God is looking at us. It's we the Lord is looking on to. Because when it comes to our priesthood, one of us can make a positive change. One of us. It doesn't take the multitude. One of us can make the change. Turn with me to the book of Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. That thou shalt be no more priest. Thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Ah. You see, the reason why people are not entering we are not entering into the office our office of priesthood is because we have no knowledge that's what the bible is saying 
The reason why we are not taking that office to stand before God in the behalf of the people, where well, we can stand before God in the behalf of the people, and all that I've spoken about, the reason is because we lack knowledge. We lack knowledge. So many believers, we are all priests, but not everyone has entered into it. He's saying because we lack the knowledge. And he said, because of that, I will forget your children. You know why? For instance, you are a priest in your family. If you don't pray, if you don't take your place as a priest and pray for your children. Now, I know you are not yet married, but you have to pray for your unborn children. And pray for your children. Pray over their minds. Pray to determine their godly character. Pray to determine their godly upbringing. Now, if you don't exercise that office, and you don't pray at all, they grow up. They become rebels. God will forget them. That's what you're saying. Because God expects him to take your place. Then he will take his place. But you forgot, and God will forget them. So, like America now, there was a generation that forgot to take their office as a as priesthood. And um, hmm. today we have so much rebellion among the youth and the children in America. The cause of such rebellion is not because of the children; it's because of the gener- generation that went ahead of them. There once used to be a generation in America. If they go to school, other school session, they used to have Bible studies in America. Bible studies in America, but now in America. They are telling, telling their children, you are not a boy, you are not a girl. You have to now grow a little while to decide whichever, what you want to be. I never knew that such absurdity would come in my lifetime. <laughs> you know, I never knew. Hi. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. This generation has hit the height of pride. It cannot be proud again. <laughs> this generation cannot fall because it is already falling. I'm telling you, Baba, 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 shut down. If you're on campus, God, you see, you may look at the vice chancellor and look at what he's doing. But you see, God is not looking to them, he's, he looks to his church. We are God's administration. You can determine what happens on this land. You can determine it. For instance, yesterday I had a vision. I was praying all of a sudden. Yesterday I had a vision. And I saw Ghana. I saw all of a sudden there was infighting here and there. Fighting, battles, wars, routes, all over. I know it's, 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 uh, it's just ahead of us, but I don't know how close it is. All over. All of a sudden, I had, I had a spirit. There is a possibility for such to happen. Why did God reveal that? Why did God, why, why? So that as a priest, I can order it and change it and prevent it from happening. Because by my word, I can order it. I can prevent it from actually happening. That's why God reveals such things to us. We can make it either to happen or, or not to happen. There are nations that have had wonderful, powerful, sorry, negative. There are nations that have had, had negative influences and wars and disasters. Understand? Every disaster that befell a people, God previously revealed that to a saint. A saint somewhere was actually responsible, but he didn't take his place. Of course, there are some things you cannot, pre- you cannot prevent, but sometimes you can prevent it to a certain measure. So all the negative, the catastrophe, the calamities that are happening on earth, what God does is that God actually signals his people to take charge. But most of the time they have closed mouth. Most of the time they are indolent. And sometimes insolent. Most of the time they're just thinking about themselves. <laughs> and a disaster happens. may God not forget our children because at least we have that sense to take our place beloved I want you to take your place you see sometimes we go to services and you hear a word say what a good word you just go and that is all but I pray that you go on your knees to pray 
that God will put some little burden in your heart. That at least you have concern for the church, concern for the world. You have the very heartbeat of God that what moves heaven will move your heart. At least you, you, you not just be self dependent, look, just depend on yourself, just thinking about your life and your future and your destiny because you want to be a great person. It's not just about you. May not live for yourself, but we live for Him because the love of Christ constraineth us. Because we have already already charged that if one died, then we're all dead. Because He died for us, that we who live for ourselves shall henceforth not live for ourselves, but we live for Him who died and rose up, rose again. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Who loved me and gave his life for me. Hallelujah. We don't live for ourselves. The world is crucified unto me and I to the world. God forbid that I should glory. Save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Of whom the world is crucified to me and I to the world. Oh, may we go after his cause. Jesus said, we are the salt of the earth. Now salt has preserving influence anytime you take your place as a priest you become the salt salt has preserving influence salt has the power to retard decay it has the power to retard decay and I know you know what salt does and just think, think of a world without salt or just think of males without salt we have a preserving influence in this world. We have the power to retard decay. Of course, of course, creation itself is headed towards corruption. Of course, for the creature itself was made subject unto vanity. The word vanity is matayotis, which means futility, loss of purpose, loss of direction. Creation today has no purpose. Creation has no direction. Man think from kindergarten to PhD, he doesn't even know why he's here. He just stepped in to just acquire wealth and to take care of his family. But that is not God's purpose for man. So creation is out of balance. It is, it is in futility. You see, there's a loss of God's original mandate for man. And, and the Bible says that the creation is subject to corruption. And we know that the whole world groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. So, of course, there, there is a downward spiral. Creation is, is in decadence. But you see, we can slow the process and our presence can preserve the people. That's why God in his wisdom made us salt to have to retard the decay that is on earth. Beloved, do you know that there's, there are so much refuse on, on earth, on planet earth, so much refuse from your kitchen, refuse from your house, every one of us. But why is it that the earth is not smelling? Because of salt. Now, there is salt in rainwater. There is salt in ocean water. There is salt in the rocks. Had there not been salt on the earth, the earth would have rotten stink. And now God has placed us here. The future destiny of the world is on our shoulders. Now you think Ghana is corrupt. Take us from Ghana and Ghana will sink. Because our prayers have preserved Ghana till date. If we had not been praying, the nation would have sunk. Listen, without a church, the world would have been plunged to total darkness. The church is the hinderer of lawlessness. Without, now you know what would hold it that it, he might be revealed in his time. Without a church, the devil could have taken over wholly the earth. But now he cannot because we are here. Because we have our certain influence. We have our certain function. And we are here. And by our presence, by our power, by our authority, by our dominion, we exert influence. We order the cause of nature. We order the cause of the nations. By us, the earth is sustained. By us, the leaders are sustained. Nations are sustained. Companies, industries are sustained. By, it's by the church. The church is God's force upon the earth. It's a church that is preserving everything. The world could have gotten far, far worse if we're not here. But I tell you, we can do much better than we are doing. That is why God has preserved us. May you take your place in Jesus' name. Give a neighbor a high five and tell him, may you take your place in Jesus' name.
But he said he dreamt one day and heard a cry of war, nations. And the Holy Ghost told him, Are you going to allow this to happen? He asked him. And Benin said, ah, what, Lord, I'm, I should ask you. Now the Holy Ghost asked Benin, Are you going to allow this to happen? And he said, Lord, I should ask you whether you're going to allow this to happen. Now God is asking a man, Are you going to allow this to happen? God will show you war is coming. Are you going to allow this to happen? God can do nothing except you do something. Now you should understand these dynamics. You should understand these dynamics that when Jesus was raised from the dead, and to know what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, what who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion, and every other name that is named not only in this world but in that also which is to come and has put all things under his feet and given him to be the head over all things the church gave him to be the head over all things to the church now his headship he gave it to the church he gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body the fullness of him that filled all in all the authority Jesus had he delegated it to the church. Now he's sitting down, watching us. He is the head, and we are the body. The head thinks the body acts. Is that also? The head thinks the central control of the life of the body is from the head. All the movement of the body is governed by the head. If I think of going to take the, the pen or the phone from from Pastor Godfrey, the head will think, but what will work? The leg. And what will take the, 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 the tablet? The hand. Christ is the head. He sat. He's finished it. He's not looking to the church. And he, he as the head, he communicates to us. And we must act. Because the power is delegated. So he's saying, will you do it? Will you allow this to happen? Will you allow Ghana to sink into corruption? Will you allow the church to fail? You're asking God will you, but God is not asking you because He has delegated the power to you. Hallelujah. Slap your chest and see I will not fail. See, I will not fail. Hallelujah. Now, what is the function of the priest? What does the priest do? What does the priest actually do? The priest is constituted to offer up sacrifices unto God. Now, what the priest does is that the priest offers sacrifices unto God. He also, as living stones, built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices unto God. Spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. First Peter verse two, first Peter chapter two, verse five. So the Bible said, as a priest, what we do, first Peter two five. We offer up spiritual sacrifices. Hallelujah. In the Old Testament, they offered up physical sacrifices. They would take the lamb, they would take the bullock, they would take the, and they will go and they offer them up. But we are a spiritual people and we offer up spiritual sacrifices. So if you are a priest, ask your neighbor as a priest, what, what are you offering? Because the priest, the Bible said that we, we also, we are living stones and we are all built up a spiritual house. And what we do is to offer. We offer spiritual sacrifices and that is acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. We offer. So what are you offering? What are you offering? Let me show you what we offer. Hebrews 13 verse 5. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise. That is the fruit of our lips. Giving thanks unto his name. One of the things we offer as priests, the Bible calls it the sacrifice of praise. To God continually. The sacrifice. Now, there's a difference between praising God, there's a difference between praises, praising him, and the sacrifice of praise. There's a difference, though. What is the sacrifice of praise? And sometimes we praise God for what he's doing, we are happy, but what is the sacrifice of praise? The sacrifice of praise is this. When there's no money in your pocket, and you are broken, you've not eaten the whole day, and you go like, Father, thank you for your supply. <laughs> 
thank you for your abundant supply. Lord, I'm, I'm fully loaded. Thank you, Lord, I have, I have an abundance. Until be all glory. Meanwhile, not even a kobo. <laughs> there, it is not just praise. It's a sacrifice of praise. <laughs> what you are believing God for is not there. But you dance and praise God as if it is done. We call it a sacrifice of praise. Your average is down pa. But Lord, you are holy. You can do all things. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And you are thanking him sincerely. That is the sacrifice of praise. You are looking for a wife. You are not getting one. You are looking for a husband. You are not getting one. <laughs> you praise God who is a perfect matchmaker. You praise God that Lord, thank you for having done it. Thank you for my husband whom I have not seen. Thank you that that husband is doing well. That husband is, is, is well fed. And that husband is saving you. Thank you for his life. <laughs> it's a sacrifice of praise. Hallelujah. Beloved, be, begin to do that because it is the language of faith. Oh, for the sacrifice of praise. It's one of the things we do. And it is used in a priestly ministry of intercession. Now remember that in First Timothy chapter 2, from verse 1, the Bible says, first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that will be lead what? A peaceable and a quiet life in all honesty and godliness. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Now he mentioned intercession, say first of all, priority, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, first of all. Now, there he mentioned giving of thanks. Say giving of thanks. Then in Hebrews 13, 15, and 16, he said, we should offer the sacrifice of praise. That is the fruit of our lips. Giving thanks unto his name. Hallelujah. I want to show the two dimensions of offering this kind of sacrifice. So in Timothy, we see giving of thanks. And in Hebrews, we see giving of thanks. Is that not so? But the, 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 the Greek words are different. In Timothy, the word is the word is ekarist, ekarist you. But in Hebrews, the word is homologio. But it's the same word, giving of thanks. So there are two aspects of giving thanks. One is ekaristio, the other one is homologio. Ekaristio is, a, is the ordinary giving of thanks. Father, I thank you for what you've done for me. Father, I, I appreciate it. That's ekaristio. But homologio is the word for confession. Holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, let consider the, high, the apostle and the high priest of our homologio, of our confession. Homologio. Homo means same and logos, word. Homologio, same word. What God has said, you speak it, you confess the word. You confess the word. And confessing the word to God is thanksgiving. And it's, it's a priestly sacrifice. So what happened is that you have to do both in intercession. So he said that first of all, as priests, we offer sacrifices. Then he said, we should give thanks for all men. Can you imagine? For all men. For kings and for those who are in authority. So that's how you do it. Father, thank you for the president. Thank you for the ministers. Thank you. You begin to thank God. Now understand that in the entire New Testament, that the one prayer that stands higher than all the rest of the prayers is thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is mentioned in the New Testament than any kind of prayer. Because Thanksgiving is actually faith. So, Thanksgiving is mentioned than any kind of prayer in the, in the New Testament. Thanksgiving. So, giving of thanks is powerful. Thank God for the president. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God for the nation. Thank God for every people. Thank God for the vice chancellor. Thank God for this campus. Thank God for your lecturer. Thank God. It's powerful. But you don't only do Eucharistio, you also do homologio. Homologia means you are not making confessions in the name of Jesus. Ghana is blessed. Jesus is Lord over Ghana. The president has peace of mind. 
He makes decisions from the spirit of God. The Holy Ghost has dominion over his mind. He has dominion over, over his heart. As over the parliamentarians. Now, it doesn't matter whether it is your government or it's your political party or not a political party. It doesn't matter whether you approve what is happening in the land or not. That is why it is called sacrifice of praise. And sacrifice of praise means that what you are professing, it may not be happening. Father, thank you that the president has a good heart. Meanwhile, his heart is very wicked. <laughs> so, that is the sacrifice of praise. You just confess the word. Jesus is his lordship. You speak the word as it is. Confess. Speak positively because your words are like precious. You know, you are the priest. What you say, the high priest takes from you and acts upon it. What you say, let us offer unto God a sacrifice of praise. That is the fruit of our lips. Confessing in his name. Saying the same thing. Confess. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say good things about your family. Say good things about Ghana. Say good things about your friends. Say good things about your neighbors. Say good things. Say, say, say. Someone said that prayer walk is working on sight with insight. Just take a prayer walk and on that bless every household bless every people uh, that is how to use your sorts that is your sorting function your preserving abilities you, you are the salt you are sweetening the environment you are blessing humanity and you have no idea that child in a womb which you are blessing who become a great apostle in the future and in heaven god will accredit the success to what you did on that day just speak the word speak the word it shouldn't be all about you you are a priest a priest lives in behalf of the people as with the people so with the priest god is saying that we are complaining the reason why the world the moral is full of moral decadence is because that is what the priesthood is is the priesthood that has allowed it as with the people so with the priest hallelujah may you cause changes in jesus name Turn with me to Acts 12, verse 5. Now, some people believe that whatever happens to us is the will of God, whether good or bad. So they don't see the reason to pray. After all, God is the intelligent, presiding ruler, ruling the nations and affairs of man. So whatever happens is the will of God. If it's, it's an earthquake, it's God. Tsunami is God. Whatever is God, the Lord give it and take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> Any disaster, God, why? We love it. You don't know your Bible. It's not from God. You should understand that there was a lease of dominion which Adam handed over to Satan. And that is why he is called the God of this age. That is why Jesus even called him the prince of this world. And Paul called him the God of this age. The God of this age means that he's a religious head. The prince of this world means that he's a political head. And he is behind all the cosmos, all the disasters on earth. You know that the Bible said in Job 9.24 that the earth also is given into the hand of the wicked and he covereth the faces of the judges. Who and what is his name? His name is called Satan. Now, not everything that happens is of God. Now, when we speak of the will of God, in the Bible, in the Greek, there are two words for the will of God. One, you can do nothing about it. The other one, you can do something about it. There are two Greek words for the will of God. There's a will of God that you cannot change. Another one, you can do something about it. For instance, there's a will of God which is God's eternal counsel, which is not subject to change. You know, there are some things God has purpose, like Christ should come and die. You can never do anything about it. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel of God and the foreknowledge of the Father. You see, it was the determinate counsel. Christ's coming was purpose in eternity before time. Known unto God that all his works from the beginning of the world. So, you cannot pray that Satan should be converted and be saved. Can you do that? You cannot pray that the Antichrist should not come again. 
There are some things that have been decreed. We love it. Go and sleep. You can do nothing about it. But there are some things you can do something about it. There are some things God is, you can do something about it. The Bible says, who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. That this is God's will. God wants everyone to be saved. But at the end of the day, God will not even have his will fulfilled. <laughs> so that will is subject to change. And it depends on how we respond to it. The Bible says that God is not slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness. But he's long suffering to us world, not willing that one should perish. Second Peter 3 verse 9. He, he, he didn't will that one should perish, but at the end of time, people will perish. Please, are you here? Now, listen. The reason why things happen is because most of the times it's our negligence. Now, I want us to read this verse. The Bible says that Peter therefore was kept in prison, but... Now, the Holy Ghost introduced a big but. I'll show you why. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. But prayer was made of the church without ceasing unto God for him. At this time, one of the choicest apostles called James had been killed. You know Herod, blood testy Herod. He took him and for a show, killed James. Let me ask you a question. Was it God's will for James to, to die? Was it God's will or not? God's will or not? It's difficult to tell, right? Was it God's will? Now listen. The reason why it's difficult to tell is because of God's multifarious wisdom. Now, you can have revival in the midst of perfect peace. You know God's will? God's will is that we should pray for our leaders so that we will lead a peaceable and a quiet life in all honesty and godliness. So there can be remarkable peace and there is a move of God. But how will it come? He said, we should pray. That kind of serenity comes by praying for all leaders. That is when we can live that peaceable but this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. God accepted. God loves it. That we will be in peace. And the move of God is hitting every, every corner. Hallelujah. But we may, the church may refuse to do that. The church may refuse to do that. And are uh, taken away. Then comes, there comes martyrdom. Believers are being killed. Here and there. Because... Now, my title can happen and persecution can happen because we refuse to pray. But notwithstanding, God will still use the blood of the Matthias. <laughs> notwithstanding, because of his sovereignty, he's mercifully sovereign and sovereignly merciful. And God, though we refuse to pray and we've caused trouble, he will still show himself strong and use the blood of the Matthias. To some that we don't know what is his will. But you see, if you check the scriptures carefully, James was killed and Herod was so proud he said wow the people were happy let me do another one so he brought Peter and this time around if you read the Bible carefully the prison they put Peter was higher than where they put James and the guards were higher than what the guard they gave to James because Peter was a kind of leader and the, 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 the attention was higher the imprisonment was higher the guards everything was higher and if Peter is killed, the response will be greater. They put Peter into prison, but the Bible said in Acts 12, verse 5. What does the Bible say? But, you know why the, the Holy Ghost used the word but? The word but speaks of comparison. It's comparing what happened in the time of James and what is happening. It's a big but. Comparing. The church's response when James was arrested and, and the church's response when Peter was arrested. Peter was arrested like, like James, but but prayer was made of the church without season. Huh? You just go more the church never rested. They prayed and prayed and prayed for his release. But you love it? The difference was in the but. The Holy Ghost put it there to teach us a lesson. It's a word of comparison. But. Beloved, a lot of things can be spared. But. We can have much deliverances. But. If we take heed of the but. 
We've lost much, but we can pray to cause changes. They know not, neither would they understand. May not be said of you. Beloved, you can secure the future destiny of your unborn children. Yeah. Yeah. God can even show you what they will become. If you learn to take your place as a priest, things will go well. Things will go well. Oh, Maria, Mama, Shibita. May God pour on us tonight the spirit of grace and supplication. That the word will not fade away. The word will not fade into thin air. I pray for continuity, perseverance, consistency, constancy of purpose. This God said, the people of my holiness have possessed it, but yet for a little while. We shouldn't possess it for a little while. I know the mantle of intercession is on you, but sometimes we have it just for a little while and it fades away. Some of you, the anointing to pray was thicker pre previously than the present, but I want you to avail your spirit because something's about to hit upon you tonight. Before any danger happens, God Himself will give you advanced information. And you will handle it proud before it happens. Because you take your place as a priest of God. Oh, I want you to be hungry. Let the zeal for his house consume you. Let it eat you up. I sought for a man. God seeks after a man. I sought for a man that he was standing a garb. And he wondered that there was no man. He wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his own arm brought salvation. He wondered. He want, God looks for a man. If there be an interpreter among them, one among a thousand to show unto man his uprightness. God seeks for a man. Let the spirit of grace touch you. Let the spirit of supplication touch you. The Lord is here. As in Sinai, the chariots of God are 20,000. The heel of God is as the heel of Bishop. And high heel as the heel of Bishop. Why leave ye, ye high heels? This is the heel God desired to dwell in. The Lord is here. The Lord is here. The Lord is here. His holy presence is here. Bari ebepe shete. Hey! The Lord is finding a man. He is looking for a man. He is looking for a man. Shababiata. Ye ma 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 ye be koriande. Shababiata. Ye ko ba ra ba 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 ba